most important uh, formulation facility in, uh, in, in Hyderabad, which produces solid dosage forms for the Euro uh, Europe and the US. Uh, he uh, has also had a spell in R&D in the development of generic products within Dr. Reddy's. And for the last four and a half years, he's been with CPS, where he was the, uh, uh, one of the founder members of the, um, uh, of the group which provides services to customers uh, in pre-formulation and formulation services and leads, uh, he tells me, a motivated team of 70 uh, team members. Uh, and I'm sure that's uh, absolutely right. Uh, outside of work, uh, Venkat is also a very interesting character. Um, he's, uh, he's been the, uh, uh, the secretary of a chapter of the Indian Pharma Association for two consecutive terms. And he's a trainer with the Art of Living Foundation, which is um, part of the International Association for Human Values, a society and organization which uh, spreads human values as a means to achieve harmony in the world. So, um, Venkat, please. Uh, Venkat's talk is called, Why is More Than the Key to Being the Preferred Partner? Thank you, Andy. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oops, I think that wasn't the scheduled plan. <laughs> good afternoon is a reality. Good morning was probably expected by the customer. <laughs> and the CRO found that it was already good afternoon. And, uh, but, but I think it, it falls well in line with what John said. What did he say about IST? Instretchable time. Instretchable time. So there you have an Indian at a stretch time. But I think it is probably Indian shortened time. <laughs> Am I sounding like a BD manager? I'm sorry. I'm not the BD manager for this company here. Anyway, so I come from Dr. Reddy's CPS, which is called as Custom Pharmaceutical Services. There are different names that you can give. It's, it's, it's critical uh, pharma strategies or critical... Uh, pharma solutions or caring pharma services, but we would la rather like to be called as, you know, a compelling pharma services provider, someone that the customer cannot think uh, to ignore. Uh, again, it's sales talk, I'm sorry. So uh, there we are, CPS more than meets the eye. I think we uh, saw quite a few points in John's presentation about you know, a lot of scope changes that keep happening, a lot of expectations from the customer, a lot of additional requirements that come from the customer, which the CRO is not aware of in the beginning, and he comes to know only along the project time, or maybe at the end, that, oh, this, we, we expected this too, that you will be providing. And there comes this new paradigm, and I say it's a new paradigm because, uh, as was uh, well uh, uh, told by uh, Andy also that uh, the CRO space has come into a major existence only in the last decade and a half, let's say. And then now it's evolving. There are a lot of things that are happening. The CRO space, the fact that there are many, many companies out there which need services to be provided, and then the manner in which the services are being provided are all changing by the day. And so you have several things that are happening which are, let's say, applying a lot of pressure on the CROs and at the same time easing out pressure on the customer side. At the same time, since it's all a, a, a lot of dynamics that's going on in the industry, everyone needs to be careful, the, 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 the customer, the client, as well as the CRO, the provider. In that background, uh, I think the topic that it's very, very relevant that why is more than the key to being a perfect partner? And here we go. To being the preferred partner. Which CRO would not like to be the preferred partner? Well, there's a little about Dr. Reddy's and CPS and what's behind the eye. You might have seen that at all places more than meets the eye, including on the various uh, uh, pages that have been given to you in the folder. Outsourcing partner differentiation in an ever-crowded environment. Again, this part of the industry is growing by leaps and bounds, very, very fast. More fast than the average growth of the pharma industry itself. And so you can see that within the whole, which is the pharma industry, the whole industry is growing at a pace lesser than the CRO industry's growth. And therefore, there is a sudden competition 
that every CRO is facing. Uh, not, not, not to uh, keep aside the, the threats that are coming from the Asian communities, the Asian CRO providers, whether it's India or China or any other country from there. And then a couple of case studies from biotech pharma clients. Well, this is about Dr. Reddy's. Uh, Dr. Reddy's is a $1.7 billion company, um, and it is, there, it is, there are three business units, pharma services and active ingredients, contributing about one-third of the $1.7 billion. And the CPS is part of this PSAI, the Pharma Services and Active Ingredients. Global generics contributing the balance two-thirds. And a little bit coming from the proprietary products business, which are on the incubation mode. And when I say proprietary products, it's, uh, it's about three NCEs. There are um, products being brought out in the U.S. market for the dermal segment, which are, again, uh, using different platform technologies for existing molecules. And um, there are, again, new products that are coming out from this proprietary uh, division, which is uh, meant for meeting unmet medical needs. But they are all in the incubation mode. And then there is a huge, uh, 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 when I say huge, it has a huge potential right now, not making a lot of money right now, and that's the biosimilars area. There are three products already launched, um, not yet in the Europe and U.S., because of the laws which are not yet very, very clear about biosimilars. But yes, in India and in the Asian markets, biosimilars, uh, three of them have been launched already. People and infrastructure, Dr. Reddy's is a big company, 14,000 employees, 2,000 in the international workforce, 20 billion units in finished dosage manufacturing capacities, and 17 manufacturing facilities, eight for chemicals, eight for finished dosages, and one for biologics. Financials, 1.7 billion, 25% is the CAGR over the last 10 years. That's a decent uh, growth. And the first Indian company to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange, which was way back in 2001, uh, when it was the first company other than any country from Japan, any company from Japan, uh, from the whole of Asia, to be listed in the New York Stock Exchange. APIs and product portfolio, 100 plus APIs, 150 plus finished dosages, 200 plus DMFs file globally, they're the second largest uh, DMF holder in the world, uh, 69 ANDA spending approval, three biosimilars, and eight biosimilars in development. That gives a kind of a portfolio of the company, one of the largest custom pharma businesses from India, end-to-end -end capabilities in process development, kilo lab quantities, clinical development, intermediate APIs and dosages, and commercial intermediate APIs and commercial drug product. This is one of the pictures of the technology development center for the APIs and intermediates. Three dedicated R&D facilities, two are in Hyderabad in India, and one in Cambridge. A broad client base, large pharma, more than 10, mid-size pharma, more than 10, emerging pharma and biotechs, more than 30. So you can see that it's a balanced mix of various kinds of customers. Yes, we do have a global presence. Uh, of course, India is the headquarters. We have a presence in Switzerland and Basel. We have three uh, units in UK. One is in London, Slough, uh, one in Cambridge here, and one uh, which is an API and uh, intermediate facility in Murfield. And then you have, of course, New Jersey and offices around that. And we also have a plant in Mexico which is making a lot of APIs, including steroids, and happens to be the largest producer of naproxen going into the brand Aleve of bio. And then, of course, we have a JV in Japan, and I think I forgot to put one, one spot there, which is for um, a JV in South Africa as well. Our expanding UK presence, and we are all sitting here in the UK, so we can make a small talk on that. Uh, Chirotech Technology Center, Cambridge. Um, CPS expanded its R&D center in Cambridge in April 2011 to focus on, these are the niche areas, biocatalysis, asymmetric chemocatalysis, hydroformylation, activated MPEG for pegylation, continuous processing, and carbohydrate chemistry. These are some of the niche areas for which uh, for which capability we acquired this facility from Dow, Dow Pharma Small Molecules Division about four years ago. And then we have added much more to that. We have gone to a new premises, a lot, lot more space available, a lot more equipment available, a lot more people available now to provide services to customers. API plant in Morfield, this is an aerial picture of that, making prostaglandins and a, and a permethrin, which is used for the head lice uh, removal. Uh, Pegylation is being done at commercial scale, chemical intermediates, and soon, expansion of CGMP API custom synthesis 
also going to happen from Murfield. R&D support for the development services from chemistry, 350 chemists and engineers across the three centers. We have access to GMP, killer laboratories, for piloting, multiple analytical labs for process research support, and then you have a various, you know, a, a whole plethora of uh, equipment that are used for analytics at the EPI stages, at the pre-formulation stages, as well as in the formulation. Similarly, on the formulation development, it's pre-formulation, analytical, and bioanalytical capabilities. You have all those LCMS MSs for the nanogram and the picogram levels analysis and to be done on the plasma samples. Uh, formulation development at various scales, pilot scale up, and then a lot of these, including you know, dissolution apparatus of type 3 and 4, the USP type 3 and 4, which are typically used for less and less soluble compounds, which are nowadays found more and more. More and more of the NCEs that are coming out today are less and less soluble. And therefore, we have even picked it up. I don't know if it's there in one of the slides, but we have even picked up solubilization technologies as one of the niche offerings that we can do to our customers. You know, that very well fit into that overall theory of what more than do you want to provide to your customer? He might have come to you for a simple formulation, but if it doesn't work out, does he have to go to another CRO? Can you afford that kind of a question coming up in his mind if there is a relationship that you want to extend? And therefore, you end up providing many, many things more, which may be of use to the customer. And maybe there is some other customer who directly walks into your door for that very purpose that you have expanded yourself in, in the area that you have expanded yourself in. So more than meets the eye. All those which are already seen, what's behind the eye and why is more than essential? The CPS, as I say, the customer focus. Here the focus is on the customer. And you can see that expanding technology areas in pegs, in chiral compounds, high potent active ingredients, steroids, prostaglandins, and complex carbohydrate chemistry, formulations, and modified release formulations. It's more and more that the world wants of modified release formulations because of the fact that the NCE pipelines are slowly drying up. It's more modified release and combination products that the world wants, the industry wants so that they can keep their revenue streams flowing. You have this, first class quality and delivery, stringent IP and confidentiality. We are certified by ISO 27001, for ISO 27001 by DNV, which is talking about the information security and management system. Well, that's one of the things that the customer said that uh, a CRO should have, because when, especially like a biotech company, which has one molecule and a lot of IP around that, it's like a small newborn baby. You are handling, you're handing off the baby to the CRO. And then you want that the baby should be handled very, very carefully. And then there are so many ifs and buts that go with the baby. And so you don't want to really give it to a CRO who might, um, you know, go around telling everyone about uh, what he's doing for the customer. So that is information security. That, that, that it has about 150 stipulations the ISO 27001, which was earlier a British standard 7799, which we have been audited for and re-audited for and found everything fine. Sometimes it leads to the difficulties, for example, from most of the laptops that, that are running in our company, except for the department heads, no file can come out on a memory stick. Every employee, except the department heads, can only mail within the network of the company. He cannot mail anything out. So there are, there are some, some of the disadvantages like that, but I guess on the longer run, there are more advantages than disadvantages. So that's something about uh, the DNV certification for ISO 27001, dedicated project management. That is a structure which, which we call as a PET, the project execution teams, which have a project manager, which has a formulation lead, which has an analytical lead. On the API side, you have the process engineering lead, you have the chemistry lead, and the analytical lead, and then there are teams below them. So it's a dedicated team that works for the customer's project. Formulation development, novel drug delivery technologies, including things like, and probably you thought of it already, nanotechnology. When we talk of solubilization being a problem, that is nanotechnology, that is something called a cyclodextrin complexation that can be done. Yes, and as my friend there uh, talked about Excelodose, we do offer Excelodose services too. Dr. Reddy CPS is the first and the only company in India which can offer Excelodose services. 
It was, in fact, the 174th machine that Cascugel sold. Those are that few in the world, and so it makes sense talking about that number. Uh, if, if they had started off from there, all the three birds would have been killed together. Yeah, FDA approved manufacture and packaging and these facilities that CPS offers, again, as was spoken uh, in, in one of the earlier um, uh, harshest uh, uh, presentation, was also that having a good regulatory record. The laboratories and the pilot plant and the commercial plants that are on offer to the customers from CPS Dr. Reddy's have been seen by the FDA eight times and has been seen by the European agencies five times. And as I speak today, the, the ninth FDA inspection is getting concluded. And I have feedback that at least orally there have been no 483s mentioned so far. I don't know if the inspector is going to put down something on the paper on the last day, but normally it doesn't happen that way. API and Intermediate Development Services, CGMP API approved manufacturing facilities, second largest global API producer, which we already spoke about. And then we also have technology managers. And all these, you know, comes out of that what more than can, can be provided. You know, like there are special areas like chiral technologies, chiral products. It's not that every business development guy is going to be able to answer questions on, on, in this area. And therefore, we decided to have technology managers for each of these identified special technologies that we offer. And they are the chosen ones from, from the whole globe and who can do the job for our customers who can tell the customer beyond what the customer is asking that, okay, this is also going on in the world. Will you be interested in looking at that? It, it's, I think, again, much more than the slide, it, it's from the heart that the talk can come about what more than can be given. It, 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 it's all here. It's here. When you, the paradigm being that, okay, he might have come to you, he or she has come to you for a certain service to be provided. You can very well say that, okay, this is it, this is the result. Good, bad, I don't know, black or white, you please look at it and be done. Pay me my dollars, my pounds. But that doesn't work anymore. Well, this looks a little brown. Would you rather want it white or black? And then, yes, if you want it white, this is what we can do. And yes, if you want it black, this is what we can do. You know, that kind of service provider is the need of the hour. And that's what exactly we mean when we say what more than. So you have these technology managers in HPAIs, which is hypotentactive ingredients, steroids, prostaglandins. Again, the world is moving more towards the bigger molecules, not so much in the small molecules. So all these become very important. Pegylation is a huge area. Carbohydrate chemistry, again, a very large area. And we have had some recent successes. Niche formulations to make old drugs work better. Biotech and pharma expectations are very, very high. You know, as another, uh, my earlier speaker said, um, it's not that the best brains are only in the, the blue-eyed multinational companies. Right, John? There are many of them in the biotech companies. And to satisfy their need, the CRO better pull up his socks. So the CRO, the expectations from the CROs have also gone high because of the fact that there are very many intelligent people in the biotech pharma industry. And believe me, most of the blockbuster drugs, including the one that is currently ruling the world with about a $14 billion annual turnover, that molecule did not come from a big pharma, though it's owned by a big pharma right now. It came from a very, very small pharma company and, ha and changed hand twice before it reached the final destination where it's making $14 billion a year. In order to meet the expectations of this kind of customers, the CROs better pull up their stock. Competition is high, and the number of quality service providers are increasing. Again, because this industry is relatively, relatively uh, in its nascent stages, if I can call a decade and a half uh, not too long. And therefore, in this evolving nature, there is a sudden competition. And therefore, no more advantages of geography. Well, I come from India. An Asian advantage is something that's well known in, in the CRO industry. But then there are many, many competitors to me and my services right there in India, right there next to us in China. Forget the UK and the US. Even there within that, within that geography. And therefore, it's no longer any one benefit that you can harp about. 
It's a hole that will have to be provided. That is the base level of expectation that each service provider must deliver in order to be taken seriously. That goes without saying. It's a hygiene factor. Beyond that, what else can you offer? That makes a differentiator. To understand this, let's look at the different kinds of CRO CMOs. You know, there are some who are pure service at an arm's length, which is called that, you know, but they are small service providers. And you can make a batch of, let's say, of 50,000 tablets, simple, film coated, and there, there you go. Then there are some who are pure service at an arm's length, medium to big. But again, they also are only at a service at an arm's length, which means that if you have not mentioned something in the RFP and in the purchase order, I'm sorry, we are not going to do that. And if we end up doing that, uh, doing that, please keep your dollars ready before I complete that work. Because the very fact that those companies exist on a day-to-day -day cash flow that comes out of the work that they do. It's probably that they are missing the bigger picture and therefore restricting themselves to a smaller arena of doing only what is expected or what is spelled out. The difference between that one and the next one is looking at the expectation of the customers, making a few offers, even if you look idiotic doing that, but then it might hit a chord in the customer's mind where he or she himself will think that, oh, this is something that I missed out. And the fact that the CRO thought about it is a great boon to that project. And that's where you can be a differentiator. Mega service providers, there are huge service providers. I, I was talking about DRL uh, being a $1.7 billion company. There are service providers who are bigger than $1.7 billion, who are earning their dollars out of just the service area, not having a single product of their own. But then those are the large ones who are providing to A, B, C, D, all the way up to Z. But the experience that this CRO company gets from the work done for A cannot be used for a Z, cannot be used for a B or C or D, because those remain in pocket. There is confidentiality. There is obviously IP. And therefore, that cannot be transferred to anybody else. So even though you are a huge mega service provider, you still somewhat tend to be somewhat like this for the customer. Not getting much more than what you expect. Service providers with own pharma industry base and knowledge are the fourth variety who have something of their own to bring to the table. The CRO, the, the customer asks for X, you are able to offer them A, B, and C without any strings attached. Because those don't come from any other customer. They come from your own stable. And so you have the freedom to operate. You have the freedom to offer. And you have the freedom to, 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 to decide a compensation for it. You know, that is the kind of service providers who are going to be ruling the CRO space in the years to come. And that's why What's more than that the CRO is offering is key to their sustainability in this business. TPS from Dr. Reddy's belongs to this category and as such has a huge breadth of offerings. I think you already saw that in the, in the, prior, in the previous uh, slide, all the various DMS. And I have examples. You know, there was this big pharma company from, from again, the US, uh, which um, had its own molecule, which is slowly dying out, and in a couple of years is going to be genericized. There was a drastic need for them to evergreen this product. So they wanted to make a combination. And the ideal molecule to make a combination of this product was one with another bigger pharma company. And these guys wouldn't have had the guts to go and ask them, and even if they had the guts, they wouldn't have got the molecule from that, in the, that other big pharma company. We chipped in there. Dr. Reddy's, being legacy generic company, could come out with a non-infringing form of that second molecule, which belongs to another big pharma. This first company did all their diligence on this molecule and signed up the contract with us to make a combination product. And since that API belonged to the, API, to the DRL stable, we had already developed a tablet for that as well. Well, that was a bonus to this customer that not only will they be getting a non-infringing API, but they will also get an already formulated tablet which might need a little bit of tweaking here and there to put those two things together. 
And that's what we did. And as I speak to you, six months of stability of the combined tablet is getting completed. And within a couple of months, it's going to be registered both in the US and in Europe, which is probably going to be a huge product for them, another blockbuster for them. And all this came about because, number one, of having the experience of making a com combination product, not a product, but many, many of them, having the technology and the know-how for making, let's say, well, this, this tablet turns out to be a, a bilayer tablet. And bilayer technology is not that easy to do as well. And then managing all the impurities that come out when you, when you put two drugs together. And to that extent, DRLCPS has even gone ahead and made, which, which is there in the clinics in the, in, in the UK and in Europe, which is called the cardiac polypill, which has four actives in it. Four actives, mind you. One statin, one antihypertensive, one diuretic, and um, one blood thinner. Of course, there are various combinations of those, so the, so the whole basket comes out to be about a dozen of those products. But then, I mean, it's a nightmare of how many formulators sitting here, I, I'm sure you can make out, when there are four actives which are incompatible with each other and incompatible with each other's excipients have to be put together. In fact, let me tell you the inside story. We started about, you know, giving this product a name called as LRHP, the little red heart pill. But we very soon discovered it's not going to be little. So we dropped the L. We just made it an RHP, a red heart pill. Because these drugs are already being co-prescribed by the, by the physicians, we, we did the co-development, uh, co-formulation of those. But then again, all the challenges, and so we could offer that we, make, we put two drugs together on one layer, two, dr two other drugs in the other layer, and because these two would not get married, we put a placebo layer in between. So it's a tri-layer tablet. We have the technology to go with that, we have the, 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 the QA to go with that. Because when you have three layers, and you want to do a quality assurance of, of content uniformity and the weight uh, being managed for these three different layers, it, it, it's, a, it's a tall order. But then that's capable because of the various other capabilities that you have within the organization. CRO CMOs can be again described in terms of whether they are in the APIs field, the APIs and intermediates, or dosages or both. Stage of development, there are many CROs who, who would work only for the pipeline compound, some for commercial, and again some doing both. There are general or unique technologies that are offered. So again, the, the, the customer has a choice whether he wants to go to a CRO who is only of a general kind or who has the general capability but also those other unique capabilities which may come in handy because your product may be a tricky one. And if it's not tricky, I'm sure your marketing guys would have told you that this is not going to make the, make the big bucks. The big buck products are always more complex. And then the mode of providing services. So CRO, CMOs can be kind of, you know, categorized on these various basis. Considerations on partner selection. Hard facts such as cost, time, timeliness rather, quality, and experience. And then there are a few softer aspects that also go with that. And that is like cost versus value. You may not want to go to the CRO who is the cheapest, but you may want to go to the guy who gives you the best value. Optimal rather than minimal. And I'm sure the industry has grown on the optimal uh, paradigm rather than on the minimal. But if somebody has missed the bus there, better beware that it's optimal that's going to count. Reputation. That's again something that, that cannot be done overnight. Expectation management from a relationship point of view. You know, a lot that my friend uh, Hirsch said about is, you know, there is a certain trust, a relationship. Even if you have gone through ups and downs, it's that bond that makes the difference. As, as was referred earlier, that if there is bad news, can it come to me the next minute, is the expectation from the customer. There is good news, probably it can wait over the weekend, it can come to me on a Monday, making my Monday blues a little better. <laughs> but that is what leads to a good relationship. Understanding of mutual business models between the customer and the CRO. Again, I mean, 
of course, I, I personally have experience of having worked with you know, certain projects which have moved hands at the customer end, and I have myself seen the, the culture that is there in the first uh, customer to start with and how it got metamorphosed when it was acquired by another company. The first one was a late soft guy. Okay, you finish the whole thing, give me the report, show me the evidences, and I'm happy. Here you have your invoicing. The next one comes micromanaging. Oh, did you have to do this? Why one gram? Why not 0.5 gram? There are differences in the culture. Expectations are different. And if that is not matched properly, this doesn't work out. Well, why CPS? Established technical capabilities, API intermediates and dosage services, scale and flexibility of operations, niche technology offerings, quality and regulatory compliance, that have been there for many, many years now, proven and renowned track records with partners, geographic versatility, for, for the APIs and intermediates, as I said, we have several plants in India. We also have the Murfield in Cambridge here, and also have the Mexico uh, Kuanawaka plant over there. Dedicated project managers for each project. So you have a one-point contact on whom who can be ready to put the news when things go wrong. You will not have to run from pillar to post to find out which next the news goes on. Key performance indicators are implemented to gauge progress. And then the ISO 27001, and financial stability. Yes, did, did, did anyone talk about that at all, about a CRO? Most of the CROs tend to be, except for those mega ones, uh, tend to be with, with medium to modest uh, financial background. And here you have a CRO, a C, the CPS of Dr. Reddy's, which is having enough and more of financial stability because it also has other financial streams, other revenue streams. It has, well, recently made one of the complicated carbohydrate products, a 56-step synthesis of the API, which has just got introduced as a generic product in the U.S. market, is going to be a 100 million product for the company. And, and I think kudos to, to, the, to, to the founder and then the other, the CEO, uh, who, who, the CEO, the second CEO of the company, who... Uh, thought through that very, very well, that where the money is going to come from and where it's going to be utilized and for which sector of the industry, which is growing, which is declining. And all that led to a lot of money being pumped into the, the financial stability part, which is a great boon for the customer when he's working with a CRO like that. There are a few case studies here, life cycle management enablers. Um, a strong portfolio of more than 170 products, typical to have non-infringing synthetic processes or novel polymorphs, combination drug development. Case study one, it's a customer need competitors active for a novel combination. This is one big pharma from Europe which wanted this and we have provided that. Process with freedom to operate, big pharma was able to launch the combo immediately after innovators product patent expiry. And this is another example, this is not the one that I referred to five minutes ago. This is already in the market. Regulatory filing support for US, Europe, and several other countries. API required, requirement triple post-launch over the forecast. Invested in incremental capacity, worked with raw material suppliers, and reworked production schedule to meet excess demand within six months. All that comes because you are a part of a, a, a provider who is thinking of what more than can I provide. Portfolio management, 125 plus dosages. ROW is the rest of the world because we consider Europe and used to consider Europe and US as the highly regulated markets and, and everything else as the rest of the world. And so, rest of the world, products on the market in key geographies such as US, Germany, Romania, Bulgaria, India, Russia. Russia is a huge market, Ukraine, CIS, Venezuela. Big Pharma looking to rationalize portfolio of finished dosages and hence outsource manufacture of mature products have access to a substantial ready for market bus. And what did these couple of customers gain when they came to us and took the non-infringing APIs? At least three years prior in the market. Does that sound small? I don't see an, a response. Maybe the three years is not sounding too big, but a three years for a blockbuster could mean anything like the three years put together could, could mean anything like about $10 billion for the couple of examples that I'm talking about. 
Tests are two mature products. Customers need was a ready to use formulation for a sunset product. Service was that the ready to use formulation blend customized to innovators trade dress because they wanted it in their own form. So it needed customizing. Customer utilize the cost effective offering to maintain product availability, viability and market share. Dr. Reddy is to manage the API sourcing, manufacture different strengths for different markets, and bulk packaging. Discussions on the progress to expand relationship to a basket of products. The value, ready to use formulation, enabling portfolio rationalization. And one more thing that comes out when you are looking at what more can be provided is also that you have a plethora of uh, RFPs coming to you for troubleshooting. There are lots of products of 1970s which are still in the market. Unfortunately, they use a lot of solvents for the granulation, for the coating, and for other processes from the formulation side. And of course, similar on the API side as well. They would not like to disturb the apple cart, but at the same time in the background, do those changes, file again, maintain the continuity in the market. And believe me, in the last two years, we have done six to eight such projects. There is a huge need for such, requirement, for, for such projects in, in, in the world. Proprietary manufacturing enablers, second largest API supplier globally within 14,000 uh, 14, plus metric tons of API manufactured in the last three years. Substantial depth and breadth of manufacturing experience. Eight FDA inspected GMP compliant ISO certified API facilities. Strong regulatory backbone. Sourcing 850 plus raw materials including 265 plus key starting materials from a global supplier network. All of which is coming on a platter, man. Skilled at managing complex supply chain. 350 plus process development and engineering personnel skill at technology absorption and transfer to manufacturing sites. Dedicated resources ensure fast delivery. Yes, we have faced this question. Dr. Reddy's is a huge monolith. How do you expect the flexibility that a customer needs? And therefore, this was hived out as a separate business unit with a different paradigm of working, different trainings provided to the people. Yes, you know, you will not believe me, or you will, I don't know if you will, and that is that the credo that, that's working within the CPS is science is only 50% of what you do. Science and technology is only 50% in the CRO industry. The remaining 50 comes out of how you manage the relationship, your communication, and what else are you providing. Are you giving to that customer everything that he needs, at least for that project? If no, sorry, you are not at the right place. These are the hard realities, hard facts. And therefore, we have grown, in, grown into that direction, and that's probably the need of the art. 350 plus process development engineering personnel, skill that technology absorption, dedicated resources ensure fast delivery, 100 plus audits from regulatory agencies and innovators every year. Season team, a lot of QIP, QP audits have also happened. Case study three, proprietary manufacturing. Customer needs CMO with tech transfer experience to outsource several products post rationalization of manufacturing assets. Service lab and pilot demonstration in India to limit tech transfer spend, engineering and validation batches in Mexico for equipment fit, all in six months for a basket of APIs. For a basket of APIs. And so you now know how you can retain a customer. If he has one product, you've worked on it, the second one is just waiting at the door. And if you have done that well, the third one automatically comes within the door. You don't have to wait for it. And that is what is being sought by the customers. Tech transfer team utilized past experience to adapt equi equipment train specific processes within multi-purpose manufacturing plants. Use Dr. Reddy's strategic manufacturer as part of sophisticated supply chain strategy to pass cost benefits to customers. What was the value? Enable asset rationalization, cost-effective sourcing solutions, and reduce stockout risk with the speed of delivery. Dosage services, pre-formulation, formulation, PGMP, scale-up, registration batches, manufacturing, commercial manufacturing. Is there a gap anywhere there? And that's what the customer needs. He does not want to shift CRO from time to time. He does not want to relook at all his logistics from time to time from phase one to phase 2A to phase 2B and then three and then the registration and where will the commercial come from? Every CRO may not be in a position to provide everything, 
but how much of it can you provide will be a decider. Maybe not all the five or six, maybe at least three. So you can say, well, we, we are good up to registration batches. Maybe after that you'll have to do a tech transfer. But you better be very, very good at that because after that it will mean a tech transfer, which means money and time. A case study, novel dosage supplies. A virtual pharmaceutical company approached CPS formulation for development of an eye drop. This is again a US biotech company who came to the Dr. Eddie CPS for making an eye drop for an oncology product, for, for the eye cancer, for one of the cancers related to the eye. Yes, we did get the RFP, we, get, we did get selected, and we made the eye drops for them. But during one of the discussions with that lady there, and our capabilities in the solid dosage form, we talked about mini tablets. Mini tablets are tablets with a diameter of less than 2.5 mm, as we define it. I mean, there's no standard definition to that, but as we define. And that caught the imagination of that lady. She said, oh my, eye drops run away from the eye. Eye creams make it very difficult to see through when you apply them in the eye. How about a mini tablet that goes as an implant below the lower eyelid? Yes, it is a little uncomfortable to the patient to begin with. But then, she grasped the idea by both her hands, and then we ended up making a two millimeter diameter tablet, a sustained release one, 0.4 mm thickness, and which is sterilized using gamma radiation because it has to go into the eye. Did you ask me what more than can be provided? That is this case study. Now it's in the clinics and it has done very, very well. So mostly we are going to the second stage quickly. CPS offers broad end-to-end -end capabilities, intermediate development, API, formulation, scale-up, registration, batch manufacturing. Oh, did I go back? Okay, why is more than the key to being the preferred partner? I think this has you summarizing slides in the end. Biotech often needs experienced partners that can deliver guidance. And so it's very clear, in the last more than a year, we have been asked to be a consultative CRO and not just a service provider by the biotech companies. And yes, we are providing those. Fully integrated service offering. Medium pharma often needs improved cost benefits. Yes, there are ways to do that and which is being done. Big pharma sometimes struggle to manage the large volumes of outsourced work and as such need fully flexible and capable partners. Flexibility and capability are the two key words there. A lot of work depends on other related factors which may not be directly identified in the scope of the project at the onset. I think this came out uh, in one of the examples earlier. Uh, as you said, uh, then they had to shift the uh, provider to another one because the first one could not provide what they wanted. That was not known to the first CRO at the first place. Huge synergies between different parts of an organization can be of great benefit. Drug substance plus drug product going to the same stable. Huge benefit. Number of weeks and a lot of logistical nightmares being avoided. Logistic advantages in a full service offering continuity of thought process on a project with single project manager who knows the project in and out right from the beginning to maybe several years of working together with, a, with the same customer. Different technology options available. So if one doesn't work, believe me, for a phase one, there was a requirement of three different kinds of formulations that we gave for one European big pharma customer. And that was, one was Exelodos with only the API going into the capsule. Another was a liquid filled hard gelatin capsule a conventional capsule with a liquid fill of the same drug. And the third one was an oral suspension. All the three were taken by the customer, and then they finally happened to decide in the favor of the Exelodose one. And so we ended up giving them Exelodose uh, filled capsules. Whereas the other two options also we provided. We provided, we provided samples to them, and, and then they chose uh, not to go with those. If those were the chosen options, we would have continued with those as well. So that is, you know, different technology options being available, capability to mirror pharma partners' ways of working, like the design of experiments, process analytical technologies, and so on and so forth. And capability to adapt to changing regulatory requirements. Did anyone say about the European change in the guidelines for packaging? Which of the CROs are ready to offer that immediately? <coughs> Questions to answer. That's why we say more than meets the eye. And that's why the more than is the key to being the preferred partner. That's what we think. Open for questions.
Thank you, uh, thank you, Venkat. As usual, very uh, high energy and uh, extremely interesting. We could listen to you for the rest of the day, but unfortunately, it's lunchtime. Maybe we've got time for one one question before uh, before lunch, and then we can uh, continue uh, through the lunch period. Paul. Venkat. Yep. Thanks for a great talk. Um, on the basis of what you've shown us in the last 30 minutes or so, what would you say you can't yet do? Well, <laughs> good. Very nice question. Yes. Yes, and, and, and I'm happy to answer that question. We cannot do clinical distribution as yet. We can make the product, we can put them in the uh, primary packaging, but then hand it over to somebody like a Fisher or somebody else who does the, the, the number randomization, who does the kit packing, and who manages the supply chain to go into the clinics and get them back and all that. It's a whole world by itself. And we are not yet into that. No, that's why. We are not yet into offering bio uh, services on the biotechnology side.